All right. So the Aussie, the uh, sorry, the US dollar also moved significantly, and therefore the Aussie and other currencies. Let's get some greater detail on that. Lachlan Meekin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, very good to catch up with you again on this Thursday. So Thank that you. is all the talk, of course, that Fed move and how markets interpreted, particularly what Jerome Powell had to say. It's seemingly that he is perhaps less hawkish than anticipated. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the actual um, decision and statement, I guess, was seen as slightly hawkish. You I mean, you saw the US dollar rally and the equity markets drop, but certainly that pressure, everything turned around. And um, just watching Jerome Powell there, I can see where he, where he talks about uh, more rate hikes, plural. Um, there's no reason to be cutting rates this year. And, and it's pretty obvious the market doesn't believe him. And looking at um, the, the disconnect, the dovish disconnect between the dot plot and, and, and what the market's pricing in, um, I think probably the most dovish thing from his presser was him not pressing back against that, not pushing back. He, I mean, he actually said that um, financial conditions were tightening when the market really is loosening up up to, to levels seen when you know the, the actual interest rate was much lower. So that was seen as, as very dovish, I think. Um, and really, as soon as that press, about five minutes in it, um, that's when the US dollar tanked and the equity markets just flew, especially the, the higher risk ones, such the growth, such as the NASDAQ, as you saw, you look at a chart at that, it was a, a very big five minute candle on, at that time. Mm. So um, what can we expect going forward, Lachlan, do you think? Markets, um, particularly in the States overnight, there'll be a bit of rethinking, a greater interpretation of those comments and I guess the language used by Jerome Powell. Uh, certainly, I think um, it's, a, it's a very dollar, dollar negative kind of narrative and, and that should continue. Um, it may have overdone a, a little bit, but you can't see any other way for the US dollar but, but drifting downwards and the equity market drifting up unless something changes. But I, th I think probably one catalyst will be non-farm uh, this week on Friday. There, from last night, there's a real um, difference in the sectors of, the, of, of their economy over there. I mean, you've got employment running hot from the JOLTS report. We saw that. Um, and the labour market's very tight. And then you get the, the economic slowdown in the PMIs and the ISM figures we've had recently. So I, I think one thing um, keeping the Fed on a hawkish tilt is this tight jobs market. So these, these non-farm payrolls are always an exciting figure. I mean, they're, they're great to trade. The, thing, the markets go wild at the best of times. But I think they're going to take on extra importance. As if, if they start coming down, it'll, it'll fit that narrative that the economy's slowing down. And then I think there'll even be more of a dovish kind of outlook on where the Fed's going from there. So, um, yes, this, this report on Friday, I think people will kind of be in a holding pattern to see this before the next move. Yeah, absolutely. So, meanwhile, um, Lachlan... How have you seen the performance of the Aussie? It obviously um, shot up as the as the US dollar fell. But is that sustainable with those levels it's at at the moment? It's had a great run. I mean, I mean everything's going for the Aussie at the moment. We have the China reopening, um, commodities on a tear, a, a weak US dollar. Um, unsu you know, not surprisingly, it's it's rallied pretty hard. And and that seventy one and a half level that it got through over last night is is, is a big resistance. Um, if we can push through that and hold it, uh, there's 73 would be the next kind of logical level. But looking back the last couple of years, between this 71 and 73, it, it, there's a lot of chop. There's a lot of um, reversals. The bulls and the bears really fight it out in that zone. So I think we'll drift higher while the US dollar's on this, uh, you know, downtrend. Um, but it, it'll get harder and harder, I think, the higher we go above 71. There's other currencies I think have got a lot more room above them to go, such as the euro. Mm. Um, so the Aussie dollar, yes, I think it'll get higher, but I think it'll be a battle once we get past 72, 73 especially. It's just going to get harder and harder for going any higher. Um, I mean, a lot of this China reopening has been priced in. Commodities obviously doing well, but I think the market may have got ahead of itself a bit, you know, the Aussie equities as well with, with, with how well commodities already to doing um you know you can see them moderating to an extent once the kind of euphoria of the china reopening ends how pivotal is the rba's meeting next week going to be then for the aussie do you believe obviously we're looking for some further guidance as to where that likely terminal rate will be uh, the rba's course over the over the year 
Yeah, oh, the RBA hasn't been a big driver of the Aussie dollar, Andrew. They've, I mean, certainly if, if they keep hiking, it's going to give it a, a bit of support. But you don't really see the moves on the Aussie that you'll see in other currencies from their central banks. Um, I mean, we're, we're more than likely, we're almost definitely going to get 25 next week after those uh, inflation figures we had. Um, the question is, is that it? Is, is there going to be one more? I've, I've seen some pundits say that there'll be one more and some say there'll be four more. I'm of the opinion they'll probably do two more, um, bring it to 3.6, which is where about the 30-day interbank futures are kind of predicting it. Um, but yes, the, I think um, certainly the guidance after, after the statement coming out with a hike next week could see some push in another direction for the Aussie dollar, but I don't think it'll be sustained. The RBA really hasn't been the driving force for the Aussie dollar, I don't think. And Lachlan, meanwhile tonight, ECB, we've also got the Bank of England, but just as far as the ECB is concerned, we did have the latest inflation read out of the Eurozone. It was, what, well, dropped quite significantly to 8.5%. That's still a very large number, though. Still, uh, clearly, yeah. it has a lot of work to do. But I guess in part, there's been some relief because energy prices have come down. Um, how's the euro responding at the moment? Uh, the, 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 it was a bit mixed the inflation, wasn't it? The, the, um, the core looked a bit sticky. Um, headline was, was obviously around, came down a bit. But um, with that figure, um, and there's been some better than expected you know, economic figures out of Europe. There's, there's no doubt they're going to do a 50 tonight. Um, and what people will be looking for is how strong their language is for the next meeting, if there's going to be another 50, whether they just leave the door open or whether they you know, pretty much do it as a definite... Um, but the market's pricing in 150 basis points by June out of the ECB. So they need to keep up with that to, to keep the euro supported. Um, but the euro, I think, is one that's definitely got some room to move. It's, it's, it's had a great run you know, the last couple of months. But you zoom out and look at it, you know, in, in a hot, longer perspective, it's, it's a still very low historically. So um, it, you saw the reaction last night between, say, the pound and the euro. Euro and, and how much stronger the euro was. It burst through a, a pretty strong resistance level where the pound got stuck. So I think the euro might be the story, certainly of the of of Q2. Um, you watch it go possibly up to that 115 level if if the ECB keep up with what the market expects um, and if that dollar weakness continues, we we'll certainly see it drifting up to that point. And, and especially if once it uh, we get a confirmation of a Fed pivot, which could happen as early as the May meeting. On, I think um, then, yeah, I think you'll see that some of those other currencies really take off. And the pound with uh, ahead of the the Bank of England meeting, um, of course, you know, we look back at, at last year with the turmoil of the, the trust administration that now is very much in the past. <laughs> yeah. So uh, relatively, it's all looking very stable at the moment. Yeah, I think that, that big drop and big um, rally at that point that was the guilt market falling apart which obviously from the trust administration as you said um that was and also the ukraine invasion starting off and the energy woes that you can almost discount that as a technical analysis on the chart um so the, the problem with the pound i think is that the bank of england's coming to the end of their of their hiking cycle we, we're getting 50 tonight more than likely probably a 25 the next meeting more likely that's it um they had that imf downgrade as well recently they're, they're they're looking a lot more delicate i'd say than the europeans i think the europeans looking like they're on a stronger ground so if, if i was going to trade the euro uh, and you're worried about kind of a resurgence in the us dollar i would certainly look buy any dips with the euro against the pound i think there is it's almost um well there's no definites in fx but it's a pretty good bet that the euro will outperform the pound i think at least in the next three months um as the as the bank of england finishes their cycle and there's obviously the the Europeans are going to continue on, and just the um, it looks like a, a more stable economy in the ECB than, than England or the UK at the moment as well.